Hello again, I'm back and today we'll be discussing Ruby, Ice Queendom of the Team Ruby Project. At first I had no plans to discuss it, but I think enough content has come out that I actually do have something beyond, well that happened, to say. But first and foremost, I just want to say, if you think this, any of this is appropriate, kindly unsubscribe and never appear before me in person because I am not sure I'd be able to stop myself from welcoming you to Earth. And in lighter news, as usual, I'd like to thank my wonderful patrons for making all these episodes possible. So, Ruby is getting an anime adaption, side story, movie, something or other. Now, we definitely know that episode 1 and 2 are summarising volumes 1 and 2, which is easier than it sounds given volume 1 was less than an hour long. I really hope Burning the Candle makes it into the adaption this time. There's also some form of manga being released, but we know even less about that. As for what we know of past episode 1 and 2, that's vague, in part due to the language creators use versus what fandom use. We've definitely seen Team Ruby and Juniper in some very unique outfits, and Queen Weiss seemingly lacks a scar, which has implications of potential other worlds or dream worlds or potentially something else. There's also no red layered into her design, nor is it asymmetrical, both symbols of her rebelling against the dominant culture of Atlas and her father, as well as a homage to her grandfather. So yeah, lots going on there. We also see Queen Pyrrha in a dress heavily based on Weiss's Volume 4 dress, and the one with the most distinctly different demeanour to what we're used to, almost holy or cult-like, and with the palette dominated by red almost exclusively. Queen Yang's outfit has been compared to Vernal's, while Blake seemingly has a tail, while Ruby is lacking crescent rose and looks the most civilian of the team. Ren and Nora look good, but besides winter clothes we can assume little, and as for Jorn, well, you tried to glam up dude, you tried. So, there's a lot that can be inferred, but not much concluded from the fashion alone. What else is there to say? Well, I figure I'll do some back and forth, plus some trivia for now. For one, when it comes to this series art direction, I'm of two minds. Stylistically, I think it's fairly solid. I think Yang should be a bit beefier, and I'm not terribly comfortable with some aspects, or at all, with Blake's outfit. Let alone the loss of her emblem in the Queen design, though the use of the bow intrigues me. Context may end up helping with these aspects, and Ruby is a series that likes to take something, seemingly play it straight, then subtly subvert it after all. Some might wonder if that would still be the case, given it's not RT doing this, but even ignoring the fact they've been established as having a controlling influence on the project, there is also the fact the entire cast seems to not only be really fond of Ruby, but want to actively engage with the themes and meta it embodies by its own existence. I.e. the fact it was made with respect to Japan, so those working on it want Ice Queendom to return that respect. Which I just think is really cool. Outside of style, in terms of design, oh my gosh, I adore the animation. It's so flowing and sharp and pretty, but has such an incredible intensity to it, with such vibrant colours, but that really resonates with the series and cast. Just look at that cape flowing. Spectacular. Sayari Hayami, Ruby's Japanese VA, mentioned that for the ending song, Awake, she went through the entire script of Ice Queendom and wrote the lyrics based on it, and there is a translation linked in the summary. Plus a link to the live recording. It was very pretty. Speaking of the VAs, I love that they colour coordinated their outfits to their characters, and apparently suffering Weiss due to B's flirting is real across multiple incarnations, given a little you're cute, no you're cute exchange regarding Blake and Yang from their VAs. Now to address a rumour, namely that Ruby lost popularity in Japan after Volume 3. I can't find any kind of source on this subject, save the long translation time for Ruby, which I have also seen attributed to a licensing issue, though that is also without evidence. As it is though, I find it doubtful given the Team Ruby project has gotten the funding it has, has apparently been in the works behind the scenes for literal years, meaning Ruby was seen as a viable IP throughout all the years after Volume 3. And by the fact that Ruby is seemingly consistently one of the top 5 shows viewed in Japan via Crunchyroll, and the fact the Team Ruby project matched or even surpassed JoJo coverage on Japanese Twitter. Beyond all that, hmm, well I know the current Ruby VA cast will be reprising their roles for the dub, and this also means Pyrrha's VA will be returning. Ice Queendom will apparently premiere on Japanese television in the summer, though given I'm Australian, I'm guessing that's American-Japanese summer, I don't know when these time periods actually happen or what that really means. The episodes will also air weekly on Crunchyroll and be the traditional anime runtime length. Also, I'm pretty sure given the timing of the video and the trailer that this is just dust. Like maybe it's dirty or corrupted dust, but like I'm confident it's not an evil banana. So yeah, colour me intrigued for this project. For the curious, I also have an official Twitter now if you want to give me a follow there. Oh, and if you'd like to help out with episodes or commission 3D models, please swing by my Patreon or Coffee for scripts, early uploads, models, and more. For now though, thanks for stopping by.